We think of China as in a, a sharp slowdown, but, but a lot of the uh, assets in China have recovered sharply on, on the prospects for, for a resolution here. Yeah, and I think it's time to take profits, really. Um, China uh, optimism is baked in in terms of the trade accord. It's now increasingly consensus. This was our top recommendation coming into this year, Joe. Um, and consumer discretionary in China and Chinese equities is up 32%. And I think, yeah, it's really time to, to look at uh, realizing those profits and putting that money to work in Latin America, which really hasn't seen that as steep an appreciation as China. Uh, I'm going to let my co-anchors know now. So any investments that you guys have in China would have been a good time to. Lot, uh, can we bring, let's bring this home, Catherine. Anything that, that can, most of our viewers, I don't think, are, are fully invested in China uh, at this point necessarily. They may, obviously, there, there are some ETFs and, and the like, but... Yeah. Uh, what does that mean for, for a lot of the assets that, that are in this country if China's uh, recovered? I mean, does that, should we not be as concerned about a, a global slowdown if, if, if that's forecasting that there's going to be a recovery in the overall uh, Chinese economy? Well, Joe, the three factors that took down the markets in 4Q of 2018 were exactly that, trade war taking down the globe, right? Then we had the talk of U.S. recession fears being imminent, and we had fears on the Fed. So. Our view, and my view, coming into this year was that <clears throat> take the opposite side of that. So go long the markets, go long emerging markets, which is a, uh, a levered play on the S&P. Go long the S&P, go long sectors in the S&P, industrials, energy, financials, and consumer discretionary. All of that has played out. So really the question that we ask ourselves now is how do we protect our profits? Do we, do we sell positions? Do we protect them? And I think at this point, um, with so much optimism baked in, it's, it's prudent to protect profits, buying puts on the S&P, going long the VIX, even raising a bit of a cash position. And what I really like now, Joe, is, is, is looking at the defensive. Look at, look at uh, um, food, beverages, uh, and tobacco. It's looking nicely valued, and it's a, de it's a defensive play. All right, Hank, um, you think the Fed's off the table for, for the most part, uh, and that right. the, 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 the president has a, 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 a very big interest in getting this trade deal done if he wants to get a second term. You think, that, you think that's what that is going to key off of? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I said in uh, Steve Leisman's uh, Fed survey that if Trump wants to be a two-term president, he needs to come to a trade agreement with China and then start lowering tariffs across the board. That will reaccelerate this economy. It will uh, cause CEO confidence to spike, resulting in a resumption of business investment, which has really been the missing ingredient in this 10-year uh, expansion. We've had such little business investment until uh, late 17 and early 18, but then the talk of tariffs and, uh, and actual trade action uh, kind of put a hold on that. So I don't think it's all that complicated. This, this near bear market in the fourth quarter was a policy mistake of uh, the Fed misspeaking and Trump's rhetoric, trade rhetoric, turning into trade action. You take those back. We've already taken back the Fed. Now you take back the tariffs. And I think this economy is in good shape and the bull market is in good shape. Hank, are you concerned by the incrementally bad data out of Europe this morning, the uh, German manufacturing PMI, for example, 44.7? Uh, Wilford, uh, Europe is just uh, a mess. And uh, I, I was watching on TV this weekend on Saturday, and, you know, they spent the entire morning uh, showing the yellow vests in France, and I'd totally forgotten about the yellow vests. I didn't realize they're still protesting, and now they're burning banks. And it all started with, uh, it all started with a protest on gasoline taxes, and now they're protesting everything. So I think uh, Europe is in a malaise, and the best you're going to get out of the entire region is maybe one, one and a half percent growth. That's the best case. Catherine, does it hurt U.S. equities or, or not really, particularly given the Fed's uh, support for the market? Hi, Wilfred. Yeah, it benefits U.S. equities. Let's face it, Europe hasn't done the homework. So of the three majors in the developed markets, U.S., Japan, and Europe, U.S. and Japan have made structural reforms. Tax reform is the primary reason why you had business investment jump, which your previous guest mentioned. I think that's a critical part of 
the, the, the strong acceleration that we've had in the U.S. economy. But the U.S. looks better, right? The U.S. looks better. Japan has made, um, has made structural reforms as well in terms of corporate governance reform and increasing the female participation in the labor force. So those things are good and they're structural. Um, so I would say that U.S. and Japan uh, look better than Europe. And I would agree with your, your previous guest comments. I think Europe uh, is facing some serious headwinds. The only thing, and you know this, Wilfred, that I like is, is the prospect uh, of British assets in the event that we have a hard Brexit, which is not out of the cards. Not out of the cards, but it'll be 12 days later if it does happen uh, now, right. April 12th. Hang very quickly, banks have suffered the last couple of days. Do you like any, any of the U.S. banks? Uh, we sure do. Uh, the highest quality bank in the United States, if not the world, J.P. Morgan. And you're getting a 3% yield. That's better than the 10-year Treasury. You're going to get growth of income because they're going to continue uh, returning uh, cash to shareholders. So we like that very well.